Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lokes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this video lesson, we're looking now at the secant method as a technique for solving nonlinear equations. And again, we're using one of the Young and Mollenkamp um, oh, M files scripts that they have in their book Introduction to Numerical Methods. And so in this case, we've got the function x is my secant, f, x0, x1, and n as the variables. And this is going to solve f of x equal to 0 by doing n steps of the secant method. And we're going to start with x0 and x1. So we're going to put in inputs are the function our starting guesses, x0 and x1, but this time because the way the secant method works, I don't have to actually choose two that have opposite signs. They just need to be near the correct point. And then I'm going to put in the number of steps that I want to complete. And then the output will be the approximate solution. So first we've put in y0 and y1 by evaluating the function at x0 and x1 our starting guesses. And then we're going to do the loop n times, so for i equals 1 to n, and we enter first the secant formula, so x equals x1 minus, and then we put in an approximation for the derivative, okay, so it's the Newton method, remember, was y over the derivative of y. This time it's y uh, over an approximation to the derivative of y. And so that's what we have here. And then y is f of x. And so we've evaluated a new point that's a projection along this approximate slope to 0. And y is the function evaluated there. And then we just move all of these over so that x1 becomes x0 the new x becomes x1, and we repeat the method until we're out of the loop. So fairly straightforward. So let's try running this. So again, format long simply so that I can uh, have the correct number of uh, digits so that I can tell what's going on. And I have this, and I'm going to change this. I want to set this up so that it's Two to get started. So my secant is the function. I've done an inline function here. I could have defined f outside of the function and just put in the function name f. I chose to put it as an inline function here. Uh, we've been solving x cubed minus 5. We know the answer is around 1.7-ish. Um, so this time instead of doing 1 and 2, I did 0 and 1. And I'm only going to do two steps this time. Um, and so if I say enter, and let me just give myself more space to see this. So enter, so it started with x is 5, y was 120, then x is 1.13, y was negative 3.56, then comes up with 1.129. It is closer, but it's not great, right? But I only took two steps. If I do five steps, then I get it closer and closer each time. So notice how it sort of jumped away, but then it comes in and gets closer and closer, and it is getting closer. We know the answer should be 1.7, and we're trying to get this y value to be 0, and it's not there yet but it's getting closer than it was a moment ago. Let's do eight steps. And this time, notice that I'm really, you know, I'm virtually there. But if I do 20 steps, oh dear, what went wrong? See, I, I and what's happened, let's scroll up to the last time I had a number. I'm down to outside of my significant figures. I'm seeing no change at all up here. And so now then when it tries to compute that approximate slope, as far as it can tell, that answer is zero. So now then we're dividing by zero. We have not a number and the program quit early. 
So although the program didn't fail, it is not showing me what I want because this converged in way fewer than 20 steps. Now, if you also had looked at the bisection method, when we did 20 steps here, it was only about eight digits out. It took like 40 steps to get 12 digits out. And now then in about 10 or 12 steps, we're getting the full 16 digits. So there's a difference in how fast this works. And I didn't have to choose numbers on either side. So that was an advantage here. However, because we are just simply doing a very simple minded, a loop of 20 terms or of n terms that when I went to 20, it mathematically failed. And so I can improve these functions by doing what we had done with the Newton method where we're doing an error test. So we're looking at the difference between x0 and x1. And if they are small enough within my tolerance, then quit the loop early. So that's a very obvious improvement that we could make here. But what I wanted you to see with this is that this converges very quickly and I didn't have to come up with a great guess. On the other hand, if I had come up with, let's do this one more time. Okay, let's put this in. Let me start with guessing uh, three and seven and I'll do, and I haven't tried this, but, oh, actually that one got there pretty fast, didn't it? Okay, there are certain guesses that you can make that will just like, it'll get kind of lost. And this function is pretty well behaved, so maybe it's the function. But so for some functions, this doesn't work well, but when it works, it's a great technique. So this concludes this video lesson on the secret method. Thank you very much for your time.